Now that yields are higher, there's more interest in owning government bonds, or gilts as they're known in the UK. But there are still lots of questions. Why should you buy them? How can you buy them? Where can you buy them? And how can you hold them? And of course, how much does it cost? So in this video, we'll try and address those questions. This video is sponsored by NordVPN, which lets you securely connect to the internet across all of your devices. Let's begin with why you should buy single gilts. I'd say the primary attraction of gilts is certainty. And that's because if you hold it to maturity, the day the bond essentially dies, then you know exactly what return you're going to get. That's the yield to maturity. You know precisely when the cash flows will occur, the coupon payments, the interest payments those are, and then the principal repayment, the dates, the size of those cash flows, all of that's known up front. Compare that with a stock where you have no idea what the dividends will be in future, what the price will be in future, and it's a very stark contrast. So single gilts really do work as a safe hedge against things like equity, for example, and they allow you to plan your cash flows if you've got a known fixed expense in future. But the really key thing here is that you do hold them to maturity. There's a big difference between a bond fund which never matures and a single bond which does. You've got complete control over whether you sell it or if you sell it. And personally, I don't sell them. I just wait until they mature. And that way you can effectively ignore interest rate changes because you know what you're going to get. It's locked in on day one. So in that sense, you're not really taking any interest rate risk at all. Now, the return on government bonds is never particularly high because they're very safe. However, if you adjust for the risk, they do become much more attractive. So risk-adjusted return on these instruments is actually now pretty good now that yields are higher. These are also very tax efficient. So if you've got a large amount of money which you'd like to park safely in the UK outside an ISA or a SIP, then the fact that you don't pay capital gains on gilts makes them quite attractive. You do have to choose a bond which has a low coupon because that way more of the return will come from capital gain. Those are the two components of return, the income and the capital gain, and you simply have to choose a bond where capital gain dominates. And then finally, unlike a fixed term deposit with a bank, for example, where you're locked into the investment, with a gilt you can sell it at any time until maturity. So they're also very liquid investments, which means if you need the money, you can always sell it. So now let's turn to where you can buy gilts in the UK. Now we should make a distinction up front, and it's important to understand this difference. If you buy a bond in the primary market, that's when you buy the bond when it's issued directly from the issuer. So in the case of gilts, the issuer is the debt management office, and until recently, it simply wasn't possible for retail investors like you and I to buy in the primary market. However, that has changed recently, and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Most of the bond trading that was possible until recently was in the secondary market, and most of the platforms offer this service. So that's where we're going to focus today, and this is when you buy bonds from someone else after they've been issued. The chances are you're buying it from some institutional investor, and of course you do the trading via your investment platform or broker. Now as far as I know, these are the seven platforms in the UK which offer you the ability to trade gilts. Some allow you to do it in the primary market, some in the secondary market, but we'll go into that in a moment. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN, and you're watching a video about bonds, so I assume that you are concerned about safety. And in the case of IT safety, if you're logging into your brokerage account and you're on a public network at a railway station, an airport or a hotel, then you're probably thinking, is this safe? And the answer is it's probably not, because what can happen is there can be man in the middle attacks. You think you're connecting to your hotel Wi-Fi and actually you're connecting to someone's dodgy server. So if you want to encrypt that traffic, so that your passwords aren't readable, then what you can do is use a VPN like NordVPN. That's what I do when I'm out and about. Now it's really easy to connect to NordVPN and if you've got a plugin in your Chrome browser, it becomes even easier. I just click on the NordVPN logo here and then I just choose which server, which country server I want to connect to. So I could choose one in the US, Germany, Canada, but I'm gonna choose the UK. And that's it, now I'm connected and all of my traffic is going to be encrypted. Another use is that if I'm abroad and I want to use my UK streaming accounts, 
I could do that very easily as if I was still back in the UK. NordVPN has got lightning fast servers, so it's never really slowed down my download speeds. And as a viewer of PensionCraft, you get an exclusive deal with NordVPN where you get an additional four months included in your subscription. And that comes with a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not happy with the service. To get access to that, simply use our promo code, PensionCraft, the name of our channel, or use the URL nordvpn.com slash pensioncraft. You'll also find that link in the description below. So say you've got an account on one of those platforms, how do you actually go about choosing and buying a gilt? The key thing to understand is the yield curve, because this tells you two things about a bond. Firstly, when do you want your money back? In other words, when is the bond going to mature? So here you can see individual circles which represent bonds issued in the UK. And there are only about 60 of these, just over 60 at the moment. And they have maturity dates going from just a couple of months all the way up to 50 years. So that's the amount of time your money's going to be locked up. Of course, you can sell the bond in the secondary market, but you're not guaranteed to earn the yield to maturity if you do that. So I tend to buy these and hold them to maturity. So the maturity date to me means when I want my money back. I pay about 100 today and I get my 100 back at maturity. The second choice is what kind of return you want on the bond. Some of it will be capital gain, some of it will be coupon, which is fixed for the life of the bond. Notice the shape of the yield curve right now is quite unusual. It's got this kind of kink shape in it and the short term interest rates are higher than the long term interest rates. It's an inverted yield curve. That means you're being paid to take less interest rate risk at the moment. Normally you'd expect that curve to be upward sloping. So always be aware of the shape of the yield curve. And if you want to monitor that, you can do it as a member of PensionCraft. So for our premium website members, you get access to these trackers and one of them is that gilt yield curve, which updates daily. So let's say that you want one of these short term bonds. Let's zoom in on part of the curve here and we'll focus on the short end of the curve. The size of these bond circles shows you how tax efficient they are. Bigger ones have more of their return coming from capital gain. Remember, that's very tax efficient. So let's say we want this one, which is TN25. Notice the coupon here is very low. It's just a quarter of a percent. You can identify the bond by its ticker, TN25, or you can go for the coupon combined with its maturity date. So this would be the quarters of 2025. So here's one of the UK platforms that lets you buy gilts. And once you know the ticker of the gilt, it's really easy to trade it. So here I just type TN25 and that's it. So here's that bond. You can see its coupon is 0.25%, maturity date 2025. So we know we've got the right bond. The selling price is 96.19 pence. The buying price is 96.39 pence. And if we wanted to trade it, we just click on this button. So if you do want to get access to that yield curve tracker and all the other goodies that come with PensionCraft, just go to our website, pensioncraft.com. The next question after you've bought your gilt is how do you hold it? What kind of account do you hold it in? And in the UK, we have three different kind of tax treatments for our investment accounts. One of them is an individual savings account or ISA, and you can hold gilts inside those ISAs. That way you never pay capital gains or income tax on those investments. The same goes for self-invested personal pensions. Here you can hold gilts inside the SIP and you don't have to pay capital gains or income tax either. If you hold gilts in a general investment account, you will be liable to tax, but of course, not capital gains tax because you don't pay that on gilts. Now here we're going to start talking about the secondary market, which is when you buy a bond from someone else. The trade we just saw on Interactive Investor was just one of those secondary market trades. But the question is, how much is that going to cost you? Now this can be split into two different costs. There's one cost, which is the actual dealing cost of buying the gilt. And then there's a secondary consideration, which is the cost of holding it on that platform. So for the platforms which allow you to deal in the secondary market, of which there are six in the UK that I know of, this table summarizes those two costs. You can see that the dealing fee varies quite widely. It is a fixed fee in all cases, so the size of the trade doesn't really matter unless you're buying tiny amounts, in which case the trading cost could be considerable as a percentage of your overall investment. So if the trade costs five pounds and you're only buying a hundred pounds worth of bond, that's going to be a huge trading cost in percentage terms. 
So really, if you're buying less than a thousand pounds worth of one of these gilts, then I'd say it might be expensive to trade them. What's also important is the way that you're charged depends on the platform. Some platforms offer a fixed fee. Some of them charge you based on a percentage of your invested amount, and some of them combine a percentage amount with a cap. Generally, if you're investing more money, you'd go for a fixed fee platform because there the fee actually goes down as a percentage as the size of your pot grows. If you're investing very small amounts, then a percentage fee might be more competitive. So if we look at the ISA column, the cost of holding a gilt and an ISA, you can see that Barclays charges you 0.25%, and that's up to 200K, and then any amounts above 200K, it charges 0.05% on. So if you are investing just a small amount, that might be a reasonable fee. Whereas for large amounts, you'd probably go for one of the fixed fee platforms, like iWeb or Interactive Investor, or for one of the accounts where you have a cap. Hargreaves can be cheap, as long as you steer away from funds, which can be relatively expensive. They have a percentage fee. So really all I'd say is be aware of how much you're going to trade. That's going to affect the overall cost. Also consider how much you've got invested because that'll also affect the holding fee. And you can't just look at gifts in isolation. You have to consider your entire investment account and all your other investments. For example, on Hargreaves Lansdowne, if you trade over the phone, it can be very expensive there's a minimum charge of £20 and a maximum charge of £50. It's much cheaper to trade online. And there it depends on how often you trade. So if you've had zero to nine deals in the past month, the dealing charge is going to be eleven ninety five. pounds If you've done 10 to 19 deals in the previous month, it's only eight ninety five, pounds And 20 or more deals, it goes down to five ninety five. pounds So these comparisons are never simple across platforms. But the way that you place the trade, whether it's via a call or online, can affect the cost, the dealing cost in some cases. And here you can see the holding fee for the ISA in the top panel here and the SIP in the bottom panel. And if you stick to ETFs, shares and gilts, say, then that's going to be capped at £45 a year on Hargreaves. That's for an ISA. And for a SIP, it's going to be capped at £200 per year. So not only do you have to consider how often you trade, you also have to consider what kind of investments you're going to hold to work out the overall costs and, of course, the amounts invested. And it pays to keep your eye on these fees because they do change over time. So, for example, Interactive Investor has cut its dealing fee to $3.99. So that was the secondary market when you buy your gilt from someone else. Now let's consider the primary market, which until recently wasn't available to investors like you and I. So since February of 2024, this is a new development, the Treasury's realised that in order to get more money through the door, wouldn't it be a good idea if we let citizens in the UK buy our bonds more easily? I don't know how it's taken this long to work that out. But still, they have realised it. And at the moment, as I make the video, there are two platforms that let you trade in the primary market for regular gilt. And that's Hargreaves Lansdowne and Interactive Investor. Now, the primary dealer which deals in these bond auctions for the government, in this case, is Winter Flood Securities. It's probably the most important company you've never heard of, but it does a lot of the financial plumbing in the UK. And a spokesman from Winter Flood stressed one of the benefits of trading in the primary market. So Andrew Stancliffe in the FT, he's head of execution services at Winter Flood, said that investors would not be charged a transaction fee during the sales process. So that's one benefit, no transaction fee. Now, these guilt auctions don't happen particularly often, maybe just a couple of months apart sometimes. But here's a description of the first one that was made available on Interactive Investor. And on this page, you can see the second benefit, which is although you don't know the precise price you're going to pay in a bond auction, usually it's going to be below 100 so that means you get to buy it at a slight discount. In this case, you could have bought it for £99.44. Now, on the day the thing started first trading, it usually trades at 100 So you bought it at a very slight discount, and that would increase your yield very slightly. According to my calculations, that would have increased your yield to maturity for this seven-year bond from 4.2% per year to 4.3%. So scrapping of the dealing fee and a slight discount. Those are the benefits. Personally, I think I'll carry on buying in the secondary market because it offers me a wider choice, but the primary market is now available to UK investors. 
And then finally, there's a very specific market which is now available via one UK platform, which is free trade. And this is for UK treasury bills. These are very short term UK gilts. They usually have a maturity of one month. So here's a screenshot from my partner, Laura's iPad. And you can see an offer for one of these tenders, as they're called, for UK treasury bills. Now, one aspect of this market is you don't know exactly what yield you're going to get. It really depends on supply and demand during the tender process. What they do show you is that last week's tender was 5.15%. So you do know roughly what it's going to be, but not exactly. You'll also notice that that's not far off what bank rate is from the Bank of England right now. But greater demand for these bills during the tender process will push the yield down. Less demand will push the yield up. So these are low risk investments because they're UK gilts. They're very short term. So they'll earn the short end of the curve. At the moment, as we saw, the yield curve is inverted. So that's where most of the return is. That's where yields are highest. Now, until April of 2024, free trade isn't charging a fee, a holding fee for those treasury bills. After that date, the fee that they charge will be subtracted from your return and it'll depend on your subscription level. So basic level will be 0.45% and standard plus will be 0.1%. And then month to month, they'll automatically roll over your investment until you tell them not to. Now, you can't sell or cash out of your UK treasury bill until it matures. So you will be locked in for that one month period. So that's just something to be aware of if you're going to try this out. So I hope that answers some of your questions about the nitty gritty of actually dealing in gilts in the UK. There are a pretty wide selection of platforms now which offer them in the secondary market at least. And we are starting to see the primary market take off as well. We're still nowhere near where the US is in terms of the ease of trading government debt, but we are getting there. Now, don't forget our offer from NordVPN. You'll get an additional four months if you use the promo code PensionCraft, the name of our channel or use the link in the description below, nordvpn.com slash pensioncraft. And as always, thank you for listening.